How's it hanging? It's, it's Web Studios, Studios here. here. I'm Reed. And I'm Jax. And today we're going to be talking about puff painting a Spider-Man suit. I always wanted to puff paint a Spider-Man suit because I thought it adds a lot of detail to a suit and it helps to give the texture that is on a bunch of the suits in the movie, such as like the Homecoming suit or the new No Way Home suit. I wanted to incorporate that with the PS5 Classic suit that we got a little while back. And so I wanted to puff paint different parts of this suit to help add texture. This puffy paint we got from the brand Tulip. So the black that we use for this suit is Slick, which we actually recommend above Puffy, which we use for the red in this suit. We think that the Slick is a little bit shinier and it sticks to the suit nicer. It matches most of the movies better. However, we want to use both of them so we could figure out which one we preferred. And I think we do prefer Slick more than Puffy. We have a liquid latex here that we're going to add to the puff paint just a little bit, just a little dabble, probably about this much, to make it a little bit more stretchy, so that way when you're stretching in your Spider-Man suits, you're not gonna have cracking, which does occur with normal puff paint if you're not adding any liquid latex to it. This liquid latex was about $8 and it's 16 ounces, so it's 50 cents per ounce. We got it on Amazon. I'll leave a link to it in the description as well as all of the other materials. We also got these applicator bottles on Amazon. They're incredibly useful for the finer details. However, for the technique that we use for this video specifically, they aren't really necessary. So if you're not planning on doing any finer details like we are, like basketball texture or hexagon texture, honestly, you don't really need these unless you just wanna be super, super, super specific which honestly isn't even necessary for this kind of thing. So these little bottles came in a pack of like 12, it also came with like five funnels to put the bottles in the paint in and it's a whole thing. It was like 10 to 15 bucks on Amazon, there will also be a link in the description. Honestly, I think it's a great deal, especially if you're going to be using several of them. And you could probably even use it to store paint so you don't have to move it in and out of bottles. The type of technique we're going to be using for puff painting the spiders on this suit is a technique called puff printing. I figured it out from this guy named Purple Otter Workshop. We're going to leave a link to his channel in the description below if you guys want to check him out. He's the original person that I saw do this technique, but it basically involves you putting down a thicker sheet of something and putting a bunch of puff paint in and filling it up and then you're going to use a card to flatten it out so that way you have a flatter puff paint. I believe he originally used it for the straps on a Infinity War costume but we're going to be using it on the spiders to help make them flat and not as bumpy as if you would if you just used a bunch of puff paint. The specific type of technique we're going to be using for the spiders on this suit requires the use of a foam which we bought just from Hobby Lobby for 99 cents. It's a big sheet about this big and it's going to serve you well for all of the spiders on your suits. Yeah, the foam also goes hand in hand with either a plastic bag or like a clear sheet of something. So you can trace the spider on the suit and then trace it back onto the foam. That's what we did for ours and we thought that that was the best way. So once you guys have traced out your pattern of the spider onto the foam and you have it laid out there, you're going to want to use something like this knife here or some scissors to cut out the pattern that you have traced onto there. So that way you have the little stencil that you can place onto your spider for when you're doing the puff printing. Yeah, we also found that it was easiest to do this method when you had it weighed down by something other than your hands. Like if you have some weights, maybe some kettlebells or dumbbells to put on the suit, if you're like super careful about not damaging it. However, if you really want it to get as crisp as possible, we recommend using pins and pinning it to either cardboard or something like that. So that way, like it can be as stretched out as you can get it. However, I've used pins on a Spider-Man suit before and it does leave tiny, tiny little holes. So if you're like super, super sensitive about that because you're a little baby, then don't use them, okay? Okay, so our first attempt with this technique was doing it on the back spider of the suit. I do wish that we used a little bit of a lighter shade of red. I think it came out a little bit dark. However, I still think that it looks really nice and like I wouldn't really have it any other way. It's just that I do think that it could be a little bit lighter. We were not as experienced with this. So as we said earlier in the video, it just like consisted of getting some foam, tracing everything, putting the foam on the suit, and then just, you know, filling it up with puff paint and just scraping it. We thought that it turned out actually pretty good for our first attempt. There's obviously a few little imperfections and it doesn't line up perfectly. And like, there's a little bit of leakage, but we still think that it turned out very good in comparison to what we've done before with puff paint which we haven't used this technique and I really think it's only worked once on our original miles into the spider-verse suit. 
Unfortunately, since this was our first attempt, we didn't really think to film it and we kind of just did it as an experiment to see if it would even work in the first place because we wouldn't want to make a video on it if it never worked. We should have recorded some footage, but we didn't. So sorry about that, guys. We were expecting maybe like eight to 12 hours. However, this thing took like a full two days. Like that's before you could touch it. I wouldn't even recommend putting it on until like three days just to be super safe. Maybe it was because it was just such a thick layer of puff paint, or maybe it was the liquid latex. We're not entirely sure why it happened, but all we know is that it did take a long time to dry. So this was our second attempt. We did the front spider on this suit. We used all the same techniques where we pinned it down, we cut out all the stuff, we traced it, and we placed the foam on there, and then we flattened out all the puff paint once I squirted it all on there. We did notice that there is a bit of leakage because I didn't pin down the suit all the way, so there was a bit of puff paint that leaked out on the suit which you can see here but overall I think this turned out better than the back spider it's definitely a lot smoother and I did leave it more time to dry than with the back spider before I tried to touch it which is a good idea I recommend it for you guys wait at least two days before you try to touch it to feel if it's dry and then wait until it's all the way dry and you're confident before you put the suit on other than that I think this technique turned out really great and it does add a lot of texture to the front and back spiders of this suit. We aren't planning on stopping with just doing the logos for this suit. We're also thinking about doing the webs and the texturing maybe, and the lining and the piping, and we think that it would really be an interesting project or even a series that we could do. It does kind of depend on how well this video does. We're hoping it does pretty well. Even if it doesn't, it's still kind of a passion project for us, so we'd still like to make a full series on it. The next thing that I'm going to be working on is kind of filling in some of these little spillages that happened on the back and front spiders. But after that, I'm going to be working on the piping on the blue and a little bit of this black piping that we see on the edge of the red and the blue where they intersect. You can expect to see that done in a couple of weeks, maybe a month because puff paint does take a very long time and I want to be accurate with the suit. I want to mix in as many other videos as possible. Once I'm done with the piping and the black strips on the suit, I'm going to be doing the webs to give that texture to the main web lines on the suit because you do see that in the PS4 game and the PS5 game that there is a lot of texture with the webs on the suit and they do pop up from the rest of the fabric. Once I finish the web lines and we get those videos out, I may or may not attempt to do the texturing on the suit because there is a texture on the red, it's a dotted texture, and then on the blue it is a hexagon texture on this suit, as you can see here. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do it just because it's going to be very time consuming to complete all of that, and I'm not sure if I want to spend that much time puff painting a Spider-Man suit, but I may do it. It's not super prominent in the games. I mean, yeah, you can tell that there's a basketball texture, but the hexagon pattern, you can barely even tell in the games, like, at all that there's a hexagon pattern. So I don't even know if it's worth it. If you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Make sure to check out our Patreon and our Instagram in the description below. And, and remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Have a nice day.